what's going on everybody this is probably going to be one of the longer videos because we have four main lines to cover in this specific uh video i might break it up into two and two depending on how long it takes so let's jump right in the line we're going to be covering uh, today starts with E4. It's the same as every other video. C6, D4, and D5. E takes D, C takes D, and what makes this special is the C4 push. It's called the Panov attack. It's named after someone. Some Panov dude. Uh, from here, there's a couple things that you can try. One being uh, knight to c6. And if white takes, you can retake with the queen. Threatening to take the deep pawn and white will develop a knight to defend it and you got a couple different ways you can handle this you can either march up the e pawn up one to e6 you can try pinning the knight to the queen by bishop g4 or uh yeah I mean, that's, that's more or less it. I mean, if we check out here, yeah, that's basically it as far as uh, how to handle the, uh, the pawn in the middle, at least. And from here, white will develop, let's say, uh, you know, pawn to e6. And white will develop the other knight to c3 kicking out the queen so the only problem with this line where your first move is knight to c6 is you're gonna lose a tempo because your probably best bet is just to move the queen right back to to d8 and white is ending up with an isolated pawn in this setup so you have that going for you. The other way you can handle it is, um, let's see, instead of bringing up the knight, you can bring up the e-pawn. And what that does is if white decides to capture you, you obviously have the capability of capturing with the queen or you can capture with the e pawn giving yourself an isolated queen pawn and there's another line that we get the isolated queen pawn out of the main line uh or you can just go ahead and attack that's feasible too but you do give up a central pawn and it might be a little outstretched for your reach. Kind of overextended your pawn formation. So after the C4 push, the main line and the main move is knight to F6, defending your pawn. So if they end up taking it, uh, you're able to take with your knight. And you won't lose a tempo with White's development of their knight to c3. White's best response to knight f6 is actually knight c3. A lot of times when you develop a knight, your opponent's best move is to develop the opposite knight. Because they cover the same central squares. Either the two white or the two black. From here, your best bet is knight to c6. Now, 
back in the day, uh, the best try was developing the E-Pawn to E6. And like I said, if you develop that and go with the old school line, if white takes, uh, you can take and leave yourself an isolated pawn. Or you can take with uh, the knight and leave that decision up to uh, white. And if white recaptures you, you obviously have the option to take with the queen. Or take with the pawn and leave yourself with an isolated queen pawn as well. Obviously the best bet is to take with the queen. Uh, because you no longer have the ability to lose a tempo with a knight development to c3 because it's no longer there. But, as we said, the modern move is actually knight c6. And the four lines we're going to cover all reach this position. Uh, two of them are with the move bishop to g5. And the other two we're going to be discussing is knight to f3. It's like a four knight, queen, gambit, declined kind of um, setup, I guess you could say. So, with that being said, the lines that we're going to be... Uh, here we go. Lines that we're going to be covering today, in this video at least, is the bishop to g5 variation. And white's best move from here is go ahead and capture the pawn uh, c4. So d5 takes c4, or just dx c. And... It, the two variations that we are covering in this variation, first one is white has the option to push up the pawn and kick out your knight. And the other one is capture the pawn. In the first setup, when white kicks the knight, uh, you got a couple options. I mean, this is feasible, moving it to a5, but it's knight on the rim is dim. But hey, you can give it a try if you want. Uh, the line that we're going to be covering is knight to e5. That's my recommendation when white pushes the deep on. White has the awesome move uh, if they find it. Queen to d4. Hitting that knight that's on e5. It's undefended. It's kind of hanging. And my recommendation here is actually kick out the bishop. You're offering them to capture the knight for exchange on the bishop capture. More or less, you don't want to give up your bishops for just a knight. And in this situation, black would also be opening up uh, the h rook. On an attack on where the white king is probably looking to castle. Because the queen side is pretty butchered right now for white. So white, instead of capturing, will back out to h4. And black has this cool maneuver. Not only getting the knight out of harm's way from the queen. But by putting it on g6, now you're attacking that bishop on h4. It's only real move to get out of harm's way is here. I mean, it could technically move out the knight, but as we said, you don't want to give up a bishop for a knight unless there's a solid reason to. So, when white moves the bishop to g3, black has the opportunity to strike while it's hot. Push the e-pawn to e5. Now, Fi and Shadow, or, or uh, M Passant, would be a horrible mistake, as it would lose the queen. So, the bishop will snake up that e5 pawn. Your knight will capture that bishop on e5. 
And then the queen will capture the knight on e5. And this is more or less the end of the line. And uh, we can just safely say block with the bishop and move on. It doesn't have the move push with the pawn because you can clearly just take. If you took it with the queen and that move came, now you're forced to exchange queens. And that might not be your best option. You want to keep your pieces on the board because black is more developed than white. Not by much, but you are. So that's how to maintain uh, not throwing away the game and losing when white pushes the d-pawn here instead of capturing with the bishop. So if the bishop does capture your pawn, we have the exact same move. We're going to kick that other bishop on the G file by pushing H6. It's going to maintain and back to H4. And now we have this amazing move with our queen. Queen take D4. You are hitting both bishops. There's no way to uh, query that. If you were white, I guess you could go... You know, with this horrible attempt at a trick, moving the queen to a4, you know, like, oh no, as Eric Rosen would say, oh no, my bishop. Because then white would sack the bishop with check, and now <laughs> the queen hangs. So after black captures, whoop, free queen. Oh no, my bishop. <laughs> He's the man. So uh, black or white's going to capture the queen on d4. And from here, uh, black obviously needs to keep the material even. So it will capture the queen back. White, from here, uh, it's a pretty obvious move. Best move here. Castle queen side, long castle. Not only does the white king get in protection... It also is hitting that lovely placed knight on d4 with the rook on d1. You know how earlier we uh, kind of attacked the bishop and left our knight hanging? We're going to do the same thing with g5, hitting that bishop, offering up that knight. Now white doesn't really have... Uh, a good move. I mean, that just looks ugly. That bishop is doing nothing. Big fat zero burger. So black is going to go ahead and capture the knight on d4. Had a lot of threat possibilities as far as where that knight can go. So white's going to snag it. And we need to keep material even. So g5 captures h4. White's knight is looking to jump in. Uh, black's king and rook are forkable. There's not really any pieces to jump in and defend. So knight to b5 is a hot move. You can end the line here. And know that... Uh, you got away scot-free, but when the knight jumps here, you have the move threatening his rook. He's going to threaten to fork you your rook, you threaten his rook. Uh, the only real safe square uh, is moving back, everything else forward's covered. So all the way back is the best way to go. If you look at... Uh, If you look at um, the line right here, it can get greedy and take the pawn, the doubled pawn. But then your rook is kind of out of place over there. So moving it straight back to the D rank is my move recommendation, which is actually the most commonly placed move.
here. And uh, from here, black will bring its bishop to g4, hitting that rook again. White does have time to throw in a check, knowing that the king can't um, move to d8 or d7, jeopardizing to capture that knight. So white has all the time in the world. And it, that allows you to take the only square left. You got e7. It's your only option here. White will snag your rook, and you snag his rook. Now, you might be thinking, wait, your bishop dies when you take their rook, but their knight doesn't die? On the contrary, that knight is 100% fucked. And if you look at the computer analysis, nuts. Dead even here. And the reason is, when white recaptures, black can simply move the bishop out of the way to g7, attacking that knight. Knight has two moves. That's obviously not happening. Do I need to even show? <laughs> because the pawn captures. So this is the only move. And from here... Black simply just moves over the rook, c8, attacking it. It's not going to move here, right? Let's go over all the moves. Not going to go here. Not going to go here. Not going to go here. So the only two moves left are here, which would be a dumb move because then the bishop would fall. But white does have a check to throw in. And if black captures... The knight on d5 that just checked with the knight that was on f6. White can go ahead and capture with the bishop that's sitting on c4 and capture the knight on d5. And last move of the line, you guessed it, rook d8, pinning that bishop. And that bishop will fall. Nothing white can do. Next move, you are taking that bishop. Just theoretical, I'm just going to, you know, white waste of turn, you take it. Material, well, let's do a logical move here. Knight here, you take it. Comes with check. White could either block or move. You don't want to pin yourself, so let's just move. If you count the material, white is up a pawn. Now, it does have the doubled pawns on the H file, but... Those are easily defendable with bishop f6, and you're sitting pretty. What's white going to do? That bishop is in the perfect spot to totally lock down the white knight. You have a 4-3 to three pawn majority on the king side, and you have the bishop versus the knight on an open board. So this should be an easy conversion for a win. And that is how you foil the attack when white captures your c4 pawn. Interesting line. So those are the two lines, as I said, where... Uh, White chooses to bring out that bishop to g5. And the next two lines we're going to cover are going to be the knight to f3. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now. We're at 19 minutes. And I will determine if we're going to keep this rolling and go two more lines or slide this into two. Eh, fuck it. We'll, we'll move it in two lines. That's, that's too much for one video. So I do appreciate you guys, and I will catch you on the next version with the follow-up. See ya. What's going on, everybody? Now, this is either a psych, the video didn't end, or going on. If I choose to put the videos together, or totally ignore what the fuck I just said, because... Knowing my audience, you probably did not watch the previous <laughs> video in the series. Yeah, at least at this point in time, my audience. So, 
uh, what we're going to be discussing now is the other two lines. And in the Panov attack, we just went over in volume 10.0 what to do in the bishop g5 version. After you capture, we discussed how to survive the bishop takes c4 and uh, the advanced d5 pawn push. So, kind of reversing your writ time, and we're going with the knight to f3 versions here. Now, these are some of the coolest ones, I think. Uh, you don't see many things like this, I guess. And from here, we're going to say the best move is to pin that knight uh, right away. And when black pins that knight... White is going to go ahead and pin your knight. And if you look, I mean, the score is even according to the computer. It's very symmetrical. The only difference is white has that extra pawn on c4. So we're going to take that to our advantage. And we have the cool move. They're always cool moves, right? Queen to a5, pinning the other white knight. Now, I'm also going to mention right now, both knights are pinned, but one is an absolute pin, and one is a soft pin. The absolute pin is the knight and the queen on the right side of the board, because it's absolute because you cannot move it under any circumstance. It is an illegal move. Can't happen. Can't put the white... Uh, can't put your king in check voluntarily. And the reason why it's a soft pin on the other end is because technically, white can move if it has a good enough reason to. It just will lose major material. With that being said, so we're going to pin, uh, absolute pin that white knight on c3 and white has the move gobble up that knight the bishop on g5 captures f6 what do we do we recapture <laughs> e7 take f5 and white's actually also going to come in and exchange the d pawn e4 takes d5 or simply notation, EX, I'm sorry, CXD. And by capturing that, that's also attacking your knight. I will mention that those two moves right there, are uh, not reversible. I'm sorry, if white came in and you know, took out that pawn first. Black can just go ahead and capture with the knight. And you're good to go, more or less. So after uh, white takes the knight, recapture. White takes the pawn. What do we do? If you want to pause the video now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to see if you can come up with a move which we'll just call it, uh, we'll make you a scholar. That's a cool name for it. The uh, modern defense miser. What's it called, miser? I can't click it. Why can't I click it? I want to find out the name. I think it's Miser. Anywho, the awesome move is Bishop to B4. White thinks it has a free knight. Now, that's the only move which will throw it into absolute negative numbers where the game's more or less lost at that point in time and there's no easy recovering. 
if White captures, yeah, you'd think that, you know, you'd be positive three since you just won a minor piece, but score jumped from zero to more than four points. And the reason is Bishop capture knight check. Now, it's not going to block with the queen. And if it marches up, then it's really a done deal. Ooh. What's the move? Oh, yeah, it's just castle, right? Yeah. Castle with uh, impending H rook to E. Looking at checkmate soon to come. So white would capture B2, capture C3. And black comes in again with the black queen with another check. Like we said, uh, it's not going to block with the queen because then the rook's hanging. And that just comes with another check. And it, it can't really run. Because then it's checkmate in nine. But the obvious move, if you're not trying to lose a knight, uh, you know, the human mind is going to run with the king. I mean, I guess technically you do have the block with a knight as well, but that also loses the queen immediately. So it's either lose queen, lose a rook, or test your chances on running. And if you've played this line before and are prepared, you should know it's a checkmate. And this is how to execute the checkmate. You castle on the queen side. It's checkmate and eight. From here, white's got a couple things it can do. I mean, if it really wants to uh, delay it as much as possible, uh, c6, take b7, check. You just tuck the king away. Checkmate and seven, then. If you take it, you lost the checkmate possibility, and you actually are giving the game back to white, and white will win this game. So after you dip... Behind it, uh, white's best move to delay it is queen d2. But in this situation, we have rook e8 check. And they can't move the knight. They can't really block with the queen. Their rook is currently hanging, so their best move... I mean, it's, it's sad to say it's uh, <laughs> king to d1. And from here, rook on d8, take pawn on d4, checkmate in five. If it wants to throw out everything, including the kitchen sink, it can throw in the bishop in between. So bishop f1 to bishop d3. You just go ahead and take the bishop with the rook. Rook d4. Capture rook d3. And at this point in time, um, white's king can't move. White's knight can't move. The rook on the a file is hanging. And the rook on the h file, if you tried bringing it into play, it would just choke off one more square of the king, and it wouldn't do anything. He didn't show you. That just makes it checkmate in one. <laughs> checkmate. So, uh, white's best move is to capture. So, queen d2 to queen d3. Your queen will recapture. Queen c3 to queen d3. Check. White's only got one move. Can't block with the knight. It's pinned. And from here, you bring in the rook to e2 from e8. And it does have the ability at this point in time to throw in the knight on d2 and stall it one more move. That's when the queen captures from d3 to d2. 
checking the king. It's got one move, king b1. And there's two ways to, uh, there's actually three ways to finish this checkmate. If you want to be cool, like the cool kids, bishop f5, checkmate. If you want to be uh, brute, queen b2, checkmate. Or if you want to be, I guess, semi-fancy, uh, you got the queen c2 checkmate. And that more or less delivers up the uh, the first line when white chooses to play the f3 line on move 6. I think it's move 6, right? Uh, where is it? I guess we're just going to have to go back the manual way. Yeah, move six. Nope. So that polishes up the third of fourth line. And here we go with the, I guess what, fifth? Or, I'm sorry, fourth. The last line is kind of similar to the third one we discussed bishop also comes out to g4 pinning soft pinning the white knight on f3 and more or less white tries throwing in some trickery with c4 takes d5 you are able to capture the pawn because it is defended twice or attack twice. Uh, so capture with the knight from f6 to d5 is okay. It's covered by the queen on d8. White doesn't want to waste a move capturing with the knight. Because if it did, it would be losing one of its developed pieces. And it would just be giving you an extra developing piece with a centralized queen. It doesn't want to do that. It wants to keep its... Uh, lock on with those two vital light squares in the center of the board with its knight. It put it there for a reason and wants to keep it there. So white has a remarkable resource. Queen to b3. It not only is attacking your knight on d5 in the center, it's hitting that weak b7 pawn. That's a major theme in the Karo Khan. Uh, a weak B pawn is a weak B pawn and could be uh, used to bring you down and be the last straw that breaks the camel's back. A good way for you to defend that horsey is not moving up the pawn. No, no, no. It's actually capturing the knight on F3. It is technically guarding that knight, isn't it? When white recaptures with the only piece it can, uh, g2 capture f3, it gives you an extra move. And now we can go ahead and defend it with the pawn, and the computer evaluation uh, doesn't give us the horrible score it did before because that light knight on f3 uh, doesn't have jumping in capabilities. But because of that, and that does allow the queen to come in and hit that uh, b7 pawn and take it. But it does leave that d pawn undefended since our knight on c6 is not covered by anything. We can take the d4 pawn. And it, it's left covering that c6 square. So now the queen can't come to c6 with a check. From here, white does have a bishop check on b5. And if you recapture with the knight, then it can come in with the queen and check you. A more versatile piece. Because the queen also goes left and right, so it's going to be applying pressure 
more broadly in this sector of the board. So black is going to capture that. Uh, D4 captures B5. But white does not recapture that knight. It does not. Well, what does it do? Queen to C6 check. Kind of an in-between move, as they call it, before that knight falls. Uh, black does not want to trade the queens. If it tried blocking it with the queen, which it can't, it, the rook's going to fall. So white's only logical move has to move up the king to e7. Do you think white's queen takes the knight now? Nope. Queen to c5 check, which allows you to save the knight with knight d6. But you notice the computer analysis doesn't miraculously bring you negative. It still says white's moving, even though you have three minor pieces compared to white's two minor pieces. Can you guys figure out why? It's because one of the minor pieces for black is going to fall regardless of what you do. And that goes down right here. White takes the knight on d5 with the knight that was sitting on c3. Now, you do have to capture it. Uh, the e6 pawn captures on d5. And from here, things get interesting. White does not capture that pawn. It castles kingside. And while it castles kingside, that allows black to try to uh, resolve things. It's going to come and move its queen in to b6, looking to trade queens. Because if it could do it now, it, it would be awesome. Then the score would move up because black still has an extra minor piece. It has a knight and a bishop, just a white's dark squared bishop. What does it do? Hey, hey. Queen captures d5. If you look at the pawns, now... Uh, White has the pawn majority now, too. It's got an extra pawn. This allows black to get a free move and try to throw some defense in. Its king is on the run. It's not looking good. White can bring in the bishop. White can bring in both rooks. And black's in trouble. So black saving grace move is rook to e8. No other move is good there. Because, you guessed it, rook comes into e1, checking the king. Uh, you definitely don't want to run up here, because then it would be checkmate in one. You see it? Queen g5. So, what do you got to do? You're obviously not going to block it with the, with the knight. Just gonna come in and it's gonna be checkmate in four. You gotta run. And d7 is the proper square. If you went to d8, it's not quite as good because then white can capture the rook and that comes with check. Limits options. More or less, you wanna move to d7. White's rook will recapture. And that's when uh, the king can recapture on e8. Now, if you look at the computer analysis, you're probably wondering, how is it possible that it still says it's even when white has one less minor piece? Anyone know? Bishop f4 coming in to attack that knight. Got to bring up the king to d7, double protecting it. Now white comes in with rook d1, tripling the attack on that knight. 
you do have three pieces guarding the knight, the queen, the king, and the bishop. And to be able to bring in a fourth piece, you got to move the bishop. So the proper move is actually bishop f8 to uh, bishop e7. And from here, white's got the move queen, check on f5. And this is where we're going to end this line. It's uh, it's going to be a, a feisty battle from here, and you're going to have to play perfectly. But it is possible. And it's amazing that, you know, the computer says it's even. Even though black has you have an extra piece. It's because white has such a strong attack on you. And you got vulnerable, unprotected pawns. The G pawn's not protected. The F pawn's not protected. I mean, it is because of the knight, but it's pinned currently. And it, your king is out in the open. You don't really have a, any kind of attack on the white king. He's safe. And just that queen open on the board with that rook with free range on E, D, and C is a real killer. So that sums up all the uh, pinoff attacks, all four lines. I hope that you learn how to handle uh, in the exchange variation, when white pushes that c4 pawn now. And there is one more line that we're going to cover that has the word panov in it, and that is the accelerated panov attack. And we'll cover that next. I do appreciate you guys. That was one hell of a long video, and I will catch you on the next. See ya.